it's such a grounding experience. There's something magical about taking a piece of clay, molding it with your hands, and getting to create something out of just a piece of mud, water, and your own body. Hi, I'm Pao Javier. I am the co-founder of Wabi Sabi Studio. Wabi Sabi Studio is a pottery studio that I actually built with my sister over the pandemic. We offer uh, pottery workshops of different kinds and we also make our own ceramic ware. So Wabi Sabi, the word itself is a Japanese philosophy that's centered on the appreciation of the beauty and imperfection and the fleeting beauty of nature. It's something that we found that really correlated with uh, pottery because with pottery, it's very unpredictable and mostly when, when you create something, all the tiny imperfections and all the uh, tiny nuances really just makes all the pieces, your pieces, all the more beautiful. Wabi Sabi is something that we try to keep in mind whenever we create and whenever we teach as well. So Wabi Sabi started two years ago. I was actually working as a producer at the time. I produced films and commercials. My sister is a full-time artist. She really has a knack for creating things out of uh, different mediums. She dragged me onto a pottery class. She forced me into joining one. Every potter will actually tell you the same story that it was love at first touch. It's not any different from us. It's something that's really challenging and really beautiful at the same time. There's really something beautiful about creating something out of a piece of mud and that's sculpted with your own hands. Initially, the plan was really uh, just to create a space for us to get out of our homes and uh, find a space where we can be creative and create on our own. So we found this really beautiful space in San Juan. And then we just leaped into it. It's actually the first location that we looked at. And then everything was decided by gut feel. All we needed was to make enough ceramics to be able to pay rent. And then it kind of grew on its own. Um, we started sharing our story. We start started sharing our experiences. And then I think that's where people found interest in it. I think it sparked something in them that, wow, this is different. This is something that we didn't know was accessible in the city. And then when we felt that we were ready enough to be able to share and teach, that's when we started testing and opening the doors for other people. But eventually, we were lucky enough for it to gather a bit of attention at first. And then when we, saw, we released our first practice pieces, it sold out really fast. That's when we started really getting into it from a business standpoint. We kept making more. We were so lucky that people really appreciated what we made. So that gave us the opportunity to keep practicing, keep making. People started asking for workshops and then people started getting interested in pottery, which is really a beautiful thing because it's a craft that could be considered as dying now in, the, in this age of modernity and fast-paced production. create our own creations, um, getting to do different things, uh, getting to experiment with the medium ourselves uh, is something that we deeply love. Getting to share the craft with uh, everyone has been equally part of the entire mission of Wabi Sabi. And then at the same time, it has to be fun for us too. It's not just a business. All the staff behind Wabi Sabi um, I want everyone to have a good time because when you enter a pottery studio, that's, that's a beautiful part of it. Nobody goes into a pottery studio to have a bad time. So it's nice that Wabi Sabi's become a happy place uh, where they, they get to create, they get to play, they get to exper explore, and they just really have fun. So with Wabi Sabi, we try to uh, bend a lot of rules. We try to uh, really change the dynamic of uh, pottery making. Because when you talk about ceramics, what usually comes to mind are the more traditional uh, designs. They're very rustic, they're very, there's so much depth to it. But when 
we started creating, it was mostly my sister who wanted to play around with the, the designs. Because when we started learning and getting to know the craft, uh, she started uh, thinking of other ways of doing it, other designs. How do I play with this medium? How do I bend rules to get this kind of design? Maybe how can I tap into the more uh, the younger generation and really see what else you, you can do with the medium? Because it's an age-old tradition a lot of risk-taking, experimenting, and seeing what else you can do with it. So I started my career as in media. I worked in news, and then I worked on films, and then I went on to produce ads and commercials. It's a very demanding job. It's very stressful. You put out a lot of fires every day. You work on a lot of different projects. It's very demanding, but, but very exciting as well. I loved every bit of it. So whenever I'm in the pottery studio, all the lists that I have to go through, all the problems that I had to conquer that day, it would all go away. At that moment when I'm on the potter's wheel, it's only that piece of clay in me. Over the pandemic, my world shifted from a very exciting life. I went from shoots to posts to different experiences every day. And then when the lockdown came, um, my work shifted to a work from home setup, which really took a toll on my mental health. And there was this sense that parang we were all un unstable. So that's when we thought of putting this up because I had all that free time. I needed to do something outside of my house. I needed to do something different. You see how brave people are, you know, parang getting into a craft that's so intimidating, that's so uh, inaccessible, but you see them um, really getting into it with uh, such an open mind and really with the right mindset to just get to know the craft, play around with it, not take it too seriously. Some people do, but you see that drive in them. You see that spark in them whenever they touch clay for the first time. It's such a beautiful thing to see. There's something magical about taking a piece of clay, molding it with your hands, and getting to create something out of uh, just a piece of mud, water, and your own body. So while the world was on pause, we took that opportunity to do something in silence, to build something in silence, and then if it fails, it fails. At least we have this space where we get to do what we love. But yeah, we really took the opportunity that when, when the world was quiet, why not do something crazy? We built the studio over the pandemic. Uh, you would think it's a crazy idea to put up a business or put, to put up such a huge investment at that time. But I think the mindset was I, parang, it's such an unstable feeling. The lockdown was unstable for everyone. So I think instead of um, instead of clamming up, it we really took it as the opportunity as an opportunity to uh, leap because you don't know what's gonna happen next. So why not do it now? If it fails, it fails. But at least you tried. So when we were putting up the studio, there was really no pressure. We didn't put pressure on ourselves to make money out of this. It was really just to fuel our creative energy. And we were so lucky that um, it turned into a business that's self-sustaining now. So while you can prepare, do everything that you can for success, you can really never um, figure out the outcome. You can never really control the outcome. But as long as you're happy, as long as to the core of what you're doing is pure and is um, something that you really believe in, sometimes you can be lucky enough that it becomes something that you can do for the rest of your life. And that's really something that we want to achieve.